Yeah. Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Tuesday, June the 25th. The year is 2024. Let's talk trading. Trading with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and differ from Walmart's. And just a friendly reminder, risk management. Never lose more on a single trade than you are willing to lose on a single trade. Walmart, today is a little bit tougher than yesterday. Today was a lot tougher than yesterday. <laughs> yesterday took me two trades and uh, I made my core. Happy, happy for the day, you know. Nice and simple. Done in, uh, I sat there for, now I did sit there yesterday for like three hours before I actually got my first trade. But, um, but the thing is, once I got my first trade, got in, got out, got my tips, and then, uh, and then I was able to go and actually add in to that trade. And so between those two, those two trades there, I made my core and I was happy. Today, on the other hand, um, you know, and the thing is, I've heard people go and, uh, go and say, you know, TRO that you can't, you can't go and make money because the way TRO has you indicate is because you're going to get chopped up well you know here's a reality check okay you can get chopped up there's no question about it you know and that's what was happening to me today but the thing is if you keep on taking the signals and they're legitimate signals okay eventually you wind up on top because statistically we know that you do it's just that sometimes it takes a while and so yesterday it took two trades to go and make core Today he took nine, you know, and let me turn off that annoying little buzzer. I got alarms going off because we're crossing, and I'm going to talk about this in a second, but we'll keep on crossing the, uh, the open for the day. Um, but what, what happened today was it was just going back and forth across the open, providing lots of opportunity to make trades. The problem is across, they go across the open. It put in a flip-flop box, something like that, which tells me to go in the opposite direction. I go in the opposite direction, and it would then all of a sudden resume its uh, it, its original direction. So next thing you know, I'm underwater. And then sometimes it did it did the right thing, not the right thing, but the thing that I was expecting or hoping for. And that's sometimes what happens, you know. And but the thing is that you know if you stick to it, and eventually you'll wind up with enough pips. You know, it just, it's just, it's just aggravating. It's where it really is. It's sort of like, okay, I'm up six pips for the day. I'm on my way. I'm, you know, I'm a third of the way of where I need to get to, you know, and then all of a sudden you take a loss of three or four pips. And then you get another trade. Hey, look at that. I made five pips, you know, and then take another trade. Hey, look at that. I made two pips. Then take another trade. You lose four pips and you, you just play that game back and forth. And, you just have to know that that's part of the game. It happens sometimes on some days, and you just have to go and, uh, you know, deal with it. Just, you know, uh, you know, as they say, you got to go and play the cards that are dealt, right? You can't, I can't play, I can't play somebody else, somebody else's hand. And so that's, that's what I did today. I just kept on playing the cards that was, that was dealt to me and, uh, eventually wound up on top and said, okay. And that's why I've turned off my EA because I made core. Um, you know, I'm a little bit over core, and I'm, I don't need to go in and take another chance because with the way things have gone today for me, what will happen is I'll take a loss, and now i got to go and make more. i got to go in and take another trade to get back to where I was. It's just not worth It's just not worth the frustration on a day like today, as opposed to a day like yesterday when I finally did get the trades I wanted to get. You know, I was able to go and actually make some additional money above uh, what was core because the market was not doing this choppy thing that it's doing today. And you can really see that if you look at the uh, the one hour candles, you can you, you can just see it because uh, what's an indication of that is the candles have wicks on both ends. The one hour candles, you know, for the last one, two, three. Uh, uh, and including the current candle of four candles, you know, just they got big wicks on both sides, you know, they're not huge wicks, but they're big wicks, 
And when you see that, that's telling you the market's running in a direction, turn around, running back the other way. And, and you know, that that's when you can get chopped up a little bit because the market has not taken the direction. Although if you look at the one hour, it looks like you said, okay, we're going to run up and now we're going to run down. Well, the problem is within that hour, it's where the trap is occurring. It's not happening on the daily. It's happening on the, on within the hour. Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I'm kind of flipping through the charts as you talk. And um, the one thing that I see, <laughs> price is uh, pretty much um, staying between the uh, psychologicals. It is. In fact, it, what's interesting is that that 75 line, the 2675 line, you know, it just in the last, well, this hour, you know, it actually penetrated it but came right back out of it just as quick. You know, in fact, uh, uh, in one candle, it actually jumped up like eight pips or so on it. Um, but if you go back and look, you'll see that even last hour, that line really held strong. And if you remember yesterday, that 75 line, was an issue yesterday as well. So those psychological levels are certainly really holding, um, at least for today and yesterday. Um, and it, it just, it just, again, why did, why do they hold? Well, I think they hold, um, because that's what people put, they, they put their stop loss there. They put their TVs there. They put their entries there. You know, it's just a, it's a, it's a number that's a recognizable number. Nobody wants to go in at 63.5. You know, that's just a weird number, right? <laughs> 75. We'll just go in at 75. You know, that, that makes more sense to me. You know, and people do that. It's psychologically people do that. Well, we don't have any red news today, do we? No, we don't. We don't. Um, and, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm kind just, of dead. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's kind of a dead week for news this week anyway, but yeah, uh, actually, kind of I, I'll take that back. There is some uh, um, red news coming up in about uh, 40 minutes, and but it, all it is is consumer confidence, and it's the first number, and that first number um, doesn't carry weight because uh, it, it's, re it's really funny because consumer confidence, the number comes out three times month you have the first one comes out uh, which really doesn't move the market because nobody's got con it's kind of like nobody's got confidence in the consumer confidence first consumer confidence number the second number is the one that actually moves the market and the reason why is because that's the one that really corrects the first one and it's a pretty solid number and really moves it to where it actually is and then the third one that comes out that's the one that really doesn't move the market because the second one already honed it in to where it belongs. So this one probably is not going to move the market very much. Um, the only thing that will be interesting about it because we have the presidential debates coming up in two days. And so uh, you know that for sure that consumer confidence is going to be a question that's out there uh, that's going to be asked of the candidates. So it may play a number, a play, play a role just because of that reason. This number comes in really bad. You know, the current president's going to have to go and answer for that. If it comes in really good, the current president gets to gloat on it. So it just, uh, depends what, so that number could in some way go and, uh, affect the debate, which then of course affects the mark, the uh, markets. You know, I'm looking here. It seems like a couple of days ago, actually yesterday, um, in the, uh, I guess Friday, if you look at the chart on the one hour chart, we were stuck between 25 and 50, <laughs> 26, 25, yeah. 26, 50. And so now it looks like it's found a new level. Yeah, kind of. Up. Yeah, kind of reminds me of Darvis boxes. <laughs> you now mentioning things that probably ninety percent of people out there don't have any clue what it is because that's such an old time thing. 
I don't wonder if anybody's still using that concept. I don't know. Um, but the thing is, the reality is, you can, you know, it's, there's certainly an explanation for it, and it, and it can work for you. And, and it, the idea just that you move from one box to another box, and sort of like what I do, except for I simplify it a little bit, I'm moving from one train station to another train station, and generally speaking, when it gets to the next train station, what does it do? It sort of, it sits there and goes back and forth, back and forth, and establishes a new level there. And then at some point in time, for whatever reason, it either moves back to the previous train station or it goes to a new train station. And that's kind of what Darvis boxes really make it, you know, it shows it on the chart. Right. And, uh, so, you know, it, it, it illustrates it really well. So... But anybody out there wants to go and uh, do some research, eh, that'd be a, it's a fun thing to look at because you can, I, I don't know if it's, I know people trade off of it or did trade off of it, but what I think that's really good about it is to study it anyway because it teaches you how, mar how the market moves and the idea of what I call market structure, not necessarily what these market structure boys call it. But it just shows you how the market moves from one area of the chart to another area on the chart and how it does it, you know. It doesn't tell you why it does it, nor do we really care why it does it. It just, the thing is, if we know how it does it, then we can go and start looking and saying, hey, look at that. We got, dude, we got a potential of this, something happening here because I've seen this before. And if I've seen it before, you know, and it happens, you know, time in and time again, well, guess what? There's a chance it'll happen again, and if it does, I can take advantage of that. Yeah. Well, you know, I just flipped over to the one-minute chart, and I'm looking at this uh, one candle, 10 candles ago, 7.5 pips. I think it needs to go back down to uh, the 75 level, because I see a couple of a gap down and a gap up. Neither one have been filled. <laughs> Yep, I agree. Yeah, and, and we know that it, that's what it likes to go and do. The interesting thing, again, you show my, <laughs> when, when I talk about the midpoint of big candles, um, if you look at that big candle, the 7.5 or whatever it is, and then the third candle after it, it's a, it's a uh, bullish candle, okay, but it ran down first before it ran up. And the interesting thing is it turned right at the midpoint of that candle. Of that big candle and it just shows you for whatever reason i don't get it i don't know why i really don't care to know why all i know is that you know it does tend to do that and that doesn't mean it's not going to go to the open because more than likely it will but it likes to go to the midpoint first turn around and come back up again and uh and that's again an, an observation thing that you can take advantage of and then what I mean by that is you got a flip top there, right? Well, the other thing you, is it turned around on the daily open, at least on my chart. <laughs> yeah, well, we had the same charts. <laughs> yeah, well, I meant that that midpoint just happened to be the daily open. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, and the, obviously the H4 open uh, is only, you know, a tiny, tiny bit, you know, away from that. But, you know, to all these things, and that, that, that's the, I think that's really what I'm trying to get to. You have, if you were to go short off that flip-flop box, understand that you can only maybe pick up, you know, two pips or so. Because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trading into what I call a wall. You're trading into the midpoint of that big candle. You're trading into the open of the H4. You're trading into the open of the day. And so... Now, if you know that you're only going to try to get two pips, that's fine. Take advantage of it. But just know that there's there's a, a lot of, you know, resistance there. Well, actually, in this case, we call it support. But there's, a, there's, there's something there that's going to cause a traffic jam for you and may cause you some misery. Yeah. So, and, and go into it that way. Yeah, and you know what? <laughs> the fastest 15 minutes in trading is just about over. Wait. Sometimes it just doesn't seem like that's enough time. But 
Fellow traders, always remember, never forget, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one, over and out.